In our show today, the dangers of online profiles. How to protect yourself from fraudsters. And the ins and outs of cyber crimes. Bakai Sudu Melang and welcome to Consumer Guard, the South African consumer century. On today's show, we'll be tackling cyber scams. First up, though, here are people's online shopping experience. According to the 2016 e-commerce report, online shopping in South Africa is marketable, with most users of these platforms residing in key economic provinces. Gauteng comes highest at 48.49%, followed by KwaZulu-Natal at 12.53%, with Western Cape third at 11.33%. The report, which was done through an online survey, found that 38% of their respondents accessed the internet via a mobile phone and 29% access from a work or personal computer. 59% of online shoppers prefer to do their online shopping on a desktop computer or laptop and 27% prefer to use their mobile phone. We went to the streets to hear for ourselves what the views are when it comes to online shopping. I've never done online shopping before. The reason is it's quite risky for me because personally I think there's quite a lot of fraudulent things happening with regards to online shopping. So anyone can just easily hack in with your details and be able to purchase things that you did not uh, uh, want to buy. So I wouldn't really advise anyone to engage into it or me per se. No, I do not do online shopping. Um, uh, because uh, most times I want to go directly into the shop and see what I want, what I want, you know, what I'm looking for. So of course, especially given the high rate of um, fraud in internet banking and payment, so on and so forth, yet uh, security is of a big concern. Today's electronic age enables us to virtually access our loved ones anywhere in the world. But this also means our personal info and everything else we share online can fall into the wrong hands. Cyber criminality has become a worldwide phenomenon that is lethal to many economies across the globe. The South African Fraud Prevention Services have dedicated themselves to combating fraud and helping consumers protect themselves from identity theft and impersonation. They also help companies whose online identity might be compromised. We spoke to the Executive Director, Mr. Mani van Skalkveik, who shared more. Yes, the South African Fraud Prevention Services is a non-profit organization which was started 15 years back uh, for companies to lock onto a database people or individuals who are trying to defraud them. That is the one part of our business. The second part of our business is for consumers who feel that their ID or their identity specifically have been compromised or they lost their ID book, they feel that they, uh, they could be a victim of fraud. And in that case, they can come to us um, and we will assist them free of charge, of course. According to Security South Africa, this now leaves criminals focus on the weaker links. It's evident in the Statistics South African data and the South African Cyber Threat Barometer report in later years. Ordinary citizens have now fallen prey. Well, we're seeing a rise in identity theft, um, a significant rise, I think, to the, to the level of 24% uh, comparing to last year, um, which is because I think the means of uh, using your name and ID book um, or ID number on, on various occasions be becomes very prevalent. And the more we use it, the, the more uh, times there are uh, points of failure where, where people can steal that identity. It's so difficult to, to pinpoint who the scammers are. 
Um, it's a, it's, I think it's a variation of individuals. It's a variation of syndicates and organizations that sit there, <clears throat> excuse me, and trying to get to people's identity and to use it to benefit from that process. Though criminals have been getting away with identity theft, there is a way one can protect themselves. And I think the first one is to treat your ID book and your driver's license, your passport and documents um, like you would treat cash. You will make sure that the information is uh, in a secure place that nobody just else can get their hands on it. Um, make sure you shred documents, you know, because a lot of documents have got valuable information that will, if you put these documents, information on these documents together, you can actually create an interesting profile of an individual. Make sure you shred that information rather than just put them in the dustbin. Um, if consumers feel at any one stage that their ID has been compromised um, or they've lost their ID book and they feel um, that somebody could use it in a fraudulent transaction, feel free to contact us and SMS the word PROTECT ID, one word, PROTECT ID, to the number 43366 and we will put you through a process to make sure that we are speaking to the very correct person and once we are satisfied that you are who you say you are, um, we will load you free of charge onto this website, uh, database uh, to make sure that your, your identity is protected when it comes to our members. Manny also shared tips on how one can protect themselves whilst browsing or shopping online. Uh, when you receive an SMS or an email where you have to click on a link, if you didn't initiate that link, why would you press on that? So be very, very careful. I think it is, uh, it is not wise to click on it and start providing information. You must probably be getting scammed uh, while you, you're pushing that link. Then the third, I would like to say that you, when you go onto the bank's website, especially a bank's website, you will see on the left top hand corner where it says HTTPS or HTTP, then it gives you the name of the organization. Make sure that that S is there, the HTTPS. That means you are on a secure website um, and you can transact with ease on that. South Africa has seen an influx of online shops and boutiques, especially with the growing popularity of social media. However, what you see is not always what you get. According to Statistics South Africa, stats for online scams and fraud have, over the past five years, seen an alarming increase. These stats suggest that the percentage distribution on how consumers' fraud took place can be categorized in an array of tactics. We spoke to Head of Core at Gumtree, Ms. Claire Cobbledick, who gave us the guidelines to using online shopping and portals to acquiring goods, as they are one of South Africa's most classified websites through internet standards. So Gumtree is an online classified, um, it's the largest online classified in South Africa, huge volume, close to 6 million people visiting the site every month um, with about a million listings on the site and what a classified is, is buyers and sellers and we facilitate the meeting of buyers and sellers, so it's individuals selling unused household items to one another. So I think that, you know, because it's online, there's often a perception of it being unknown. And certainly there are precautions that one needs to take and be considerate of because you're, you're dealing in a virtual environment. But if I look at the volume close on a million listings and the number of transactions that are happening on a daily basis, um, certainly I believe that it's, it's, you're able to trade very safely on a, on a classified. The top three categories stand at 16.7% of individuals who experience consumer fraud. 
and said that in most cases this mainly happened through a shop of some sort, whilst the other 10% were victims of either cheque or credit card fraud. And 11.7% were related to fraud perpetuated by a salesperson. These category by category, we see some categories as greater risk for fraud, higher ticket items for example, in the automotive space, um, in the property space where there are deposits required. And it's all this combination, as I say, of automatic flagging, which is a technology process, and then the manual client services team. One of the key things that we've done in the last two years is um, move our client services team. It was previously based internationally in Canada because we are owned by eBay. But we moved the team locally. We felt that South Africans would better understand um, the, the local landscape. As more and more people use online shopping as an alternative to traditional mall hovering, which may sometimes require a dedicated time slot to make it happen, online shops and shopping portals enjoy growth in the sector. Sadly, some exploit this convenient means to scam users. However, Gumtree says its screening process does maintain security to significantly keep crime at a minimum. I look at the volumes of um, reported as fraud. It sits at about probably between 20 and 30 listings per week that, that get sent through to our client services team. And again, then you need to also verify whether they actually are fraudulent. You see sometimes um, small businesses with rivalry actually reporting on one another. So, so that's reported cases. It doesn't necessarily mean that is all fraud. But at the same time, I don't believe that all fraudulent listings are necessarily coming through to our system. So there will be unreported cases of fraud as well. What has been your experience shopping online? Have you been a victim? Share your thoughts with us on Twitter. We are at consumer underscore guard underscore. We are also available on our Facebook page. And our Facebook is simply at ANN7 Consumer Guard. It's time for us now to take a break. When we return, we find out the advantages and disadvantages of shopping online. Plus, we also chat to a cybercrime lawyer to find out what legal grounds you have regarding online matters. Don't move. Thank you.